competition. What a big day for this youngster from Austria. Hello, Schwarzenegger. And what a physique he has. We'd hear more from Arnold And I remember looking out there and seeing this 5,000 people screaming out there. And still we have this great energy. We have been doing this now since 1976. We have been running Mr. Olympia competitions here. We have been running Mr. Universe competitions, Miss International, Amateur Championships, Professional Championships. But there's championships everywhere you look. That here is a gathering of all the different sports, all in one shot. So this is really great to see all those athletes from the different sports uh, to come together here. And I uh, want to just say to all of you, thank you for being here. Thank you for having been such loyal fans for so many years and coming to our Arnold's Classic. And it is because of you that we have the most successful fitness weekend in the world, right here in Columbus, Ohio. But I have very fond memories of Columbus, Ohio, because this is where I won my first World Bodybuilding Championship. And this is why I wanted to build bodybuilding in this town. And since then, we have had the biggest competitions here. The biggest guys are coming to this competition. And of course, when I say big, I mean big. All right, welcome to the 2015 Arnold Classic pregame show. I'm Dave Palumbo here with Chris, the technician Aceto, and Lonnie, the Swami Teeper. And uh, we're going to talk to you about all our predictions tonight and what we think is going to happen in the next two days here in Columbus, Ohio. Chris, we are here. I can't believe it. It's 2015 Arnold Classic already. And uh, all the stars are out in, uh, I guess you could say, in stars because they're all over the place. And I guess the talk of the town now is who will be crowned the Arnold Classic champion. Dennis Wolf winning last year, narrowly beating Sean Roden. Uh, the two of them won't be in the show here tonight, but um, or I should say this weekend. Uh, I have to believe that, you know, Dexter Jackson, who is a four-time Arnold Classic champion, has got to be considered the front runner. Lonnie and I talked about this Monday night on the Heavy Muscle uh, TV show. Uh, what's your thoughts on Dexter Jackson going into this event? Well, I, I think that Dexter Jackson has clearly got to be considered the favorite. If, you, if somebody's not considering them, him the favorite here, then they're negating what he's accomplished in the past. He's won four times. Um, he's coming off a uh, top uh, he, uh, five finish at the, at the uh, Olympia. You know, he won a show uh, according to, uh, he won a show it, uh, on, on the tour after. Um, I think, you know, I think. He knows how to win. He knows how to win. Um, I think his, his absolute best quote is behind him, but um, he's extremely dangerous because he's complete, he's balanced, he comes in in great condition, um, and he's beaten everybody in this lineup before. So uh, based on all those, those factors, he's got to be considered the man to beat. Well, I need, you uh, went out on a line, you said that Dexter Jackson here has got to be the man that you know, is going to lead this pack, the judges are going to be looking for in that first call out. Um, tell me why Dexter Jackson should win in your mind. Well. Like Chris said, he's beaten everybody in this lineup. He's won the show four times. There's an extra incentive. If he wins this weekend, he becomes the all-time record holder with five victories, breaking Flex Wheeler. He's tied with Flex Wheeler right, right. now, not to mention the $130,000 to go with it. So there's a lot on the line. He's 45 years old. You know, he's amazingly – I don't know. I think he's as good as he has been. I don't know if he's better. I don't know if he's a shade less, but uh, – and again, what I want to emphasize is I haven't seen anybody other than, you know, on video and stuff. And everybody looks in the, good in the gym except me. So I don't really know what anyone else looks like. There's certainly guys in this lineup that can take this title from them. Let's talk about some of these other guys. Justin Compton, who won the Orlando Show of Champions last year in rather convincing fashion. Uh, he's, in, he's only, uh, I think, 27 years old. I think 26. 26 years old. And here's a guy... A, Chris, who super impressed us last year, I mean, really upped his game from the year before. Um, he was always known for his conditioning. He has nice shape, but he came in freaky last year. I, we see pictures of him being released online. Obviously, pictures don't tell the whole story, but he looks like he's added a good five or six pounds of muscle, maybe more. Um, can Justin Compton come in here and surprise this lineup and become the first, you know, uh, unknown to really win the Arnold Classic? You know, the answer is uh, there's the, the, the possibility, as Kai Green would say. Um, but I'm not sure if it, it will happen. He, you know what, he reminds me of a denser version of Steve Kuklo 
young muscle, dense, d- dense, bigger, bi- yeah, bigger version. Um, that said, you know, uh, as my nemesis Sean Ray would say, um, he hasn't been tested, meaning he's been tested in the Orlando, um, and you know, he has not s- stood next to people who have. Uh, like a Dexter Jackson, for example. Justin Compton reminds me of the guy from the 90s who used to win the Nationals or USA, go to Night of Champions, win that, go to the Arnold, win that. Who am I talking about? The Mike Francois, the Porter Cottrell's, the Flex Wheelers, the Kevin Lavronis. We haven't seen that for 20 years yeah. or almost. Sure. I mean, is Justin Compton going to be that guy that goes from national champion you know, now he wins his first pro show that's a little on the smaller side. Now he comes to the Arnold and wins that and makes himself a front runner in the Olympia? You know, he, he may because, you know, just because he uh, didn't beat, you know, quote, top names in Orlando last year doesn't mean that he could have had they not been there. I mean, had they been there. You compared him to Dennis Wolf last yeah, year. Yeah, I said he was a better version of Dennis Wolf. You what know? do you think about that, Lonnie? He's awful good. He's, uh, you look at the guy, he's got shape. He's he's got plenty of muscle. He's you know he's got good conditioning. Would you compare him to Dennis Wolf? I, I could see With that. Better calves, of course. I, I I think he potentially could be better than Dennis Wolf. He's smaller than Dennis Wolf. Uh, Dennis is about six foot. I think Justin's about five eight. But you know he's got all of the body parts, and uh, you know it's going to be real interesting this weekend. I understand what Sean Ray's saying. You're only as good as who you're standing next to on stage. But like Chris pointed out, I also agree with. But he looked awful good, and no matter who was on that stage, I think he would have held his own if not one. Let's throw another name into the mix. Cedric McMillan, Lonnie. Obviously, Chris DeCito training this guy. He was third here last year. A lot of guys thought maybe he could have been in that top you know, two grouping. Um, probably the most genetic tools at his disposal. He, what do you think it's going to take for Cedric to win this show? I love this guy's physique. He's got it all. He's about 6'1", 6'1 one, six, one and a half. I don't know, Chris, what is he, about 250 to 260, somewhere in that area? 76. 276 with a beautiful shape. And his is, you know, the conditioning. If his conditioning is on, it could be big trouble for everybody. I've seen pictures of Cedric. You've shown me. Cedric looks like he might be his best that he's been. What will it take for Cedric to lose the Arnold Classic? Um, I, I think it would take somebody to be at their all-time surprising lights out best. Um, I don't see Cedric losing the back double bicep. Um, I don't see Cedric losing the side chest. Uh, I don't see Cedric losing the side tricep. He'll be very hard to beat in the most muscular. Um, He could potentially lose those, but those are poses that I feel confident that at a minimum, he'll be difficult to get by. You know, it's interesting because Cedric has got this one of these physiques that when you look at him alone, he's impressive, but he's not lights out impressive. And then you put him next to other people and he makes them look really bad. Yeah. Well, because he's, you know, he's legit almost 6'3". Um, Is he that and, tall? Yeah, he's wow. that tall. And he has uh, a waist that is absolutely the smallest on stage, far smaller than Dexter. Uh, he's got a better flow than Dexter. Uh, the only w- way Dexter, I think, challenges him is if De- Dexter brings his all-time granite hardness, which, although he placed fifth in the last two Olympias, they're, they're a hardness without the density that he had maybe five years ago in his, at his all-time best. So, um, you know, there's that type of showdown. There's a showdown of working, you know, Compton in there. Um, I just think... Let's uh, throw another name in there. How about Evan Santapani? Um, Evan Santapani is extremely dangerous for this show. Um, I think that uh, if, if, you know what, if you go back and you look at the pictures last year, the only way uh, Evan is marked to fifth place is from the waist down. So if he brought his legs up, he's an absolute positive contender for first place. Is it possible, Lonnie, that he brought his legs up enough in this last year that we might see Evan be a factor for the win here? Well, you know, on the plane ride here, I was studying the bios again, mm-hmm. preparing for emceeing, and I was looking at the pictures in the program. And uh, I remember you and I had talked about the, the shallowness in at least right. part of the leg. 
his legs look really good in the program. I'm right. looking at like, these quads look really good. Well, he's good. got very good quads. It's his, kind of his inner thighs, his and hamstrings, and glutes yeah. that tend to be a little undersized. Yeah, I, you know, when he won the Nationals, he was like 25, 24, 25 years old. Yeah. I really thought, and he won a couple pro shows. I go, this guy's an Olympia contender. We haven't really seen that yet. Mm. Now, this is a good test for him. I mean, you know, uh, you don't have Sean Roden or Phil Heath or Kai Green in this. Right. This is the opportunity to you know to grab one and say, okay, I'm the real deal. I think Evan seems hungrier this year, Chris, than he has in the past. Maybe because he doesn't have a contract with a magazine. He doesn't have you know I don't know what his supplement you know he left the animal. Uh, I don't know where he's in, if he's in limbo with that. Do you think he's like he realizes this is do or die for him pretty much? You know he has to start making an impact. I, I think so. The magazine contract forced him into the show last year with ten weeks to go. One. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a little tidbit of information. Why cut that? Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, I think that he's hungry because he's, uh, you know, there's a lot of chips on the table, so to speak. I know that he's been going and traveling to Brooklyn and training with Oscar twice a week or something. Like that. That's a long, it's like a two-hour ride each way. So he, he must be pretty serious. Yeah, he, he is serious. And I, I did, you know, I tried to rope a dope him in today. I, I actually, I'm wearing the Ali t-shirt. And I did text him and I said, uh, I, I hope I, you know. I hope you are at your absolute best and on your game, and I hear you are. So I try to make him feel relaxed, right? So that you know he's he don't complacent. Yeah, he's complacent, and somebody else can sneak in there. Yeah. But um, you know, I I I think you know this is total speculation that uh, having Justin Compton in the show is is good for. I think Compton's Evan. a better version of Evan because he's got legs. Well, you know, his legs are better. Um, Evan is taller, and he's he's probably right. bigger in a lot of ways structurally. Um, you know, that's the one thing that I'm interested to see on stage is, is Compton is 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 not a six three guy like Cedric, and he's not how tall is Evan? Close Almost to, six feet. Yeah, oh, six feet. You know, height does it sometimes count for things when you're you know when you when you have fullness. You know what I mean? It makes you look a lot bigger on stage. Lonnie, Evan sent the Pony, Justin Compton, two young guys, relatively young guys, similar real muscle. Thick arms, delts, chest, back. Um, who's better in your mind? You know, that that I'm still going to have to give the edge to Evan because he's been there, but mm -hmm. I'm not so sure he's going to beat him yeah. on Saturday. Uh, in, in our predictions that we did on Monday on your show, yeah. I think I had Compton third in my you predictions. Did. And you had him second, I believe. Yeah, I did. And you had Big Mac winning, and I, I had, had Dexter Mills, winning. Yeah. So I think that... Uh, you know, this thing could be a crapshoot. Like Chris says, you know, Dexter, this, this isn't an easy road for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a favorite based on past performances, but there's some good, good young guys coming up, and I didn't know Cedric was that big. I mean, I know I was looking up to him, and I remember <laughs> yeah. telling him, you're not 6'1". You're taller than 6'1". He goes, no, I'm 6'1". And, the only, bo uh, only bodybuilders lie about making their height lower. Yeah. Except for what's his name, who Lee Priest used to try to make it higher, and Sean Ray. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this question, Lonnie, because Ruli Winkler is another guy who can knock your socks off when he's at his best. When he's not at his best, he kind of like fades to the back of the pack. Where do you think he'll f fall in this lineup, and why? If he looks like he did at the Olympia, he's not going to finish very high. And why, what didn't you like about him at the he, Olympia? I thought he was too heavy. His stomach was distended. Mm -hmm. You know, he's gobs of muscle. He doesn't need more muscle. Mm -hmm. He's listed in the program at 5'6", 287, <laughs> I don't think which he means he's 5'7", 250. Yeah, <laughs> you know, is that the, but, the truth? I don't know. He's probably – he's got a lot of muscle, but I don't know if he's got the flow. I don't know if he's going to have the conditioning to match these other guys. Mm -hmm. Chris, what do you think about Ruli Winkler? Well, I heard from my, my inside sources um, that he's having some issues, water issues uh, today, meaning uh, I guess he, you well, know. Today's only Thursday. Well, that, that's right. Two things I can say about Raleigh is uh, what I heard today is, you know, he's really tight in the morning and, you know, halfway through the day it looks like he's gained, well, actually he has gained like 10 pounds of water during the yeah. day. That, which is right, probably. Yeah. Well, the other thing, but looks dramatically, quote, worse. Hopefully they're not overcarving him. Is that what you're well, saying? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. But, um, you know, the flip side of that is uh, I saw him tanning with uh, in Guy Sustanino's room the night before the Chicago Pro where he beat Justin Compton. And he looked crazy, you know, round. It was like the first time we saw, like, the right package for right. Raleigh. 
and he did not have a line in his body the night before the show and i was thinking this guy's lost his mind thinking he's doing a show and the next day he was ripped i'm dead serious i'm exaggerating a little bit water is a big thing with him yes so because uh, and i and I, i tell that story because i've seen him you know, the night before show look extremely soft, and the next day look extremely tight. And then I hear today, like, oh, he was great in the morning, and by noon, he's you know soft as butter. So his physique is all over the place, and and because of that, the answer is we have no clue which sure. Raleigh shows up, and that's why we always speculate so much about Raleigh because you and I have seen him we like don't know how he's going to show legs up. without legs, extremely full, extremely flat, detailed, not detailed. He wins shows, he gets tenth at shows. So he's the he's the biggest we don't know wild card. Branch Warren, Lonnie Teeper, four two time Arnold Classic champion, four time most muscular award champion when they used to give the award out. Um, what is Branch Warren full? He seems to have gotten better ever since, you know, obviously he tore the quad. Uh, he, he had that great Arnold win and then he, he slipped a little bit and he seemed to kind of pull himself back up last year, finished sixth at the Olympia. He won the uh, Dallas Europa Super Show. What do you think Branch will fall in this lineup? This is a guy, you know, I was semi-writing him off. He looked really good at the Olympia. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's obviously structural issues there, but I think one thing we know for sure, he's going to come in shape. He packs a hell of a lot of muscle, right. those crazy wheels. And uh, I just don't know if the other guys come in spot on, if he's got to have, the, if he has the shape to battle. But I don't want to count the guy out. Like I said, he's won the right. contest twice. Right. Right. I didn't have him in the top six going into the Olympia last year. No. I think I left him out of the top ten in my predictions. <laughs> so he showed me. Uh, he's, he's still got to be considered a factor up there. Well, I think Branch Warren's gift is that when other people are off, he exploits that, and he usually winds up placing way higher than most people think. However, if it's a show where we go in and everyone's in shape, which I don't think we've ever seen, Chris, no. uh, Branch is going to be in big trouble. But given the fact that probably half the guys will be off their game, Branch certainly could wind up in that top three or four, you know, easily if, if we see some guys slipping out of that top group. You know, he, he's, got, he's got a lot of density, a lot of gnarly muscle. And I, I've said it before, I think he's extremely vulnerable on the front and back double bicep shots. Um, and at, 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 I don't know if he was, like, less vulnerable before or guys had less – guys have better back doubles. And I – I, I just think at this level, even if you're granite hard, when you have a sketchy front double and back double, it's going to hurt you against, uh, let's say, Dexter Jackson right. or Cedric McMillan right. um, and I, and I, or Justin Compton or even Evan. You know what I mean? So the list goes on, um, and, and that's, that's, that's what I, I think is gonna the, the, the problem for him here is. Let's talk about a couple of the other guys. Tony Freeman, almost 50 years old. I think he's going to be 49 this year. Uh, he's 47, uh, 47. Is that it? Yeah. I think, he no, he's, no, he's over he 40. 48? No, I'm 47. He's got to be 49. I think his birthday's at the end of August. He's 40, going to be 49. Is he going to be 49 yeah. in August? Yeah. Wow, he's really amazing. I mean, to still be up there at that age. But Can that you make said, the top five? Uh, boy, that's going to be tough. You know, he hasn't been the last few times he's been on stage. You know, this guy was at one time an Olympia contender. He's I don't winning know. pro shows every year. Yeah, yeah. He, he has a great physique, but, you know, it's got to catch up with you sooner or later. You do, you know? think it's caught, do you think Father Time has caught up with him? I just don't see his legs looking the way they needed to. Yeah, he, he used to have those big billowy quads. I just don't see them there anymore. Yeah, he's, you know, he's amazing for his age, but you can't take that into consideration when you're on stage against Not these a guys. Show, now, yeah. Dexter's 45, but... You know, 45 to 48 or 49 is a big big yeah. difference, too. Let's talk about, what about Marius Doni from South Africa? This guy's got some freaky structure. structure. He's got the flary quads, the, the small waist, the great back double. Where does he fall in this lineup? You know, he, he could surprise. You know, he, he could surprise, but it's hard to surprise at this level because the competition. These are the best. These are the best, and it's, it's not, this, this is not like the Frigno show that he did. Um, you know, there's way more depth. And he was, quote, off for him there. You know, he has to be so spot on to get the right look. Um, and unfortunately, you know, he's going up against these, you know, guys who have mentioned who have been around the block and been at this level for a long period of time. I don't think he's been – I mean, he's been in one Olympia, I guess. 
Um, but he's, you know, it's a very competitive show, so he's probably not going to get uh, the look that he expects, even if he's at his best. Ben Pekulski, um, he was a guy who was second place here a number of years ago, I think 2013. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's arguably got the best legs probably in all the IFBB maybe at this point. Um, his upper body, obviously, his, his weakness at this point, and you know, it's not a weakness, it's just he's not as good as his legs. Can Pakulski shock people and maybe break into this top five grouping? Well, he was second two years ago, but the lineup wasn't what it is this no. year. And he has to be absolutely 100% to have a shot, I think, at a top five or top mm -hmm. six because of the structure. The calves, as good as anybody in the game. Quads, same thing. Tons of muscle. It's the structure, you know, and right. you can't train for structure very well, so right. th there's a problem. All right, let's 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 give me your top five, Lonnie, here, or top six if you want. Okay, I'll go uh, Dexter Jackson, Cedric McMillan, Justin Compton, Evan Senapani, uh, Branch Warren, and Ruley Winkler. Chris, top, top six. Uh, Cedric, uh, Dexter, Evan, Compton, Baiki. Oh, we forgot Baiki. Beautiful physique. Lionel Baiki. Lionel Baiki. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I just threw him in there because, um, you know what? I, I, I threw him in there because I saw him compete against a, an inferior version of Compton in Chicago a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if 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 the we're not in Vegas for the Olympia, but you know, to use the cliche, if the if the dice is rolled correctly and that fall they fall on the right, yeah. you know, spots. He could, you know, if there's ever a dark horse in a show, it's him. He could be the dark horse. You know, you're right because... If he, if he, shows, up, if he shows up in the um, Arnold Brazil condition and fullness and shape, um, you better watch out, everybody. Although we still haven't seen him with strided glutes. So sure, that's, you know, sure. that seems to be the, the benchmark of guys who are going to win shows, you know. So can he play top five? Maybe you're right. Um, my top five is going to be Cedric McMillan, Justin Compton, Dexter Jackson, um, Ruli Winkler, Evan Santapani, and who did I forget? Well, you, you name five, name six. I'm trying to think. Who did I leave How out? How about Branch Warren? Branch Warren. That's, <laughs> that's, I'm going to go with Branch Warren. I, I think Branch will certainly be in the top six. I, I actually think Branch will probably be fifth, to be honest with you. And I'd put Ruli Winkler sixth. So we'll see. You know, I'm always wrong, so I would trust Lonnie Teeper before anyone. He usually gets most of the predictions right. Let's, do, let's talk about the 212 division because last year, Flex Lewis, the reigning Mr. Olympia, did this event. He's not in it this year. Uh, obviously, leaves the door open. Eduardo Correa and Jose Raymond were second and third, respectively, at the Olympia this past year. Um, some people felt that either one of them might have been able to win this event or win the Olympia. Uh, but obviously, Flex Lewis prevailed. Who will win here in Columbus, Ohio, Lonnie? If, if Eduardo looks like he did at the Olympia, and as much respect as I have for Jose Raymond, who's a tremendous bodybuilder. But I can't see anybody beating this guy. Why? I mean, he's just, he's hard as nails. You know, I, I, when people start picking apart his physique, I guess I'm looking at somebody else. Mm. I see a pretty complete physique there, and the conditioning is second to none every time I've seen him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, Jose is terrific too. You know, uh, what he's done over in his career is phenomenal. But I'd have to go with Correa. I just don't think anyone could beat him if he's on. Chris, um, will Correa's conditioning and slightly taller statue uh, beat out Jose's in more muscle and just as hard conditioning? In other words, well, I guess what we're saying is will stature you know, supersede muscle mass? You know what? It, it's normally – I. I Go, I'll give you this. Going into the Olympia, I would say yes, it would. But when I saw them next to the each other at the Olympia, and they were they they were really moved around in the Olympia, um, it, it, it was really a toss up because you, I think you put it perfectly. There's no way anyone's going to out condition Eduardo Correa, and the, and surprisingly, when he gets on stage in the two twelves, he looks tall and wide, um, which gives him some advantage. But once you get Jose in the mix. You know his 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 branch warrenness comes out, meaning the the, the density. He's with, dense with better back, shape, with a better bat. You know what I mean? He's he's got an overwhelming amount of density in a lot of body parts, 
And I think that, uh, you know, Dusty Hanshaw put it this way. It, all Jose needs to do is be in a call out between him and Eduardo, and you're going to see a real battle, or him and Flex by themselves, and you're going to see a battle because he fights and he comes alive. You know, and, and if he can pull his vacuum, that might, you know, really. I, you, you read my mind. I was going to say, if he pulls the vacuum, it's all over. You know what? He was in Prague where somehow he ended up third. And it was the best he'd been able to pull a vacuum in, in years. And he looked like 20 pounds bigger than he was just two weeks before. So if he can pull the vacuum the way he, he has shown to be able to pull it. It has another dimension to his it physique. Has a big dimension to his front double bicep, and once you can win that shot, you know you get a momentum on this on er, on everything else. So, it's going to be a battle, and it'll probably be the battle of the night. It'll probably be as exciting as any, anything we're going to see. And let's not face it. There's a lot of good guys in this lineup, Lonnie. We got Hide Yamagishi, we got Aaron Clark, who was third here last year. I mean, Clark, you know, by himself in his progress pictures, looks like he's the champ. He seems to have problems when he makes the weight. He seems to flatten out a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, even Eduardo suffers from that a little bit as well. Some of these guys look great before they have to deplete and, and make weight. And then when they make weight, something just disappears from their body. Some wow. Yeah, uh, I really liked Clark last year. Uh, I'm still picking him for third. Yami Gishi in fourth. Mm. And, and Charles Dixon probably in fifth. Dixon is a true talent, Chris. Uh, can Dixon come in here and shock people? Or is he just not as complete as Correa and uh, and not as hard as Jose? Well, he's not going to have, which it sounds trivial, but he's not going to have the stage experience and confidence that Eduardo and Jose are going to have. So that that's a little bit of a knock. He's not going to have Eduardo's condition. And Jose probably has as much, if not more, density. Having said all that, I could be wrong. And he may just shock everyone, or, you know, he may be fighting for a top three spot. Um, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, Aaron Clark suffers from the uh, the the Eduardo Correa syndrome, which is actually, I I, I always say Jose uh, Eduardo Correa is the absolute best 212 bodybuilder. Two weeks out, people say, "What do you mean?" I said, "Because he's really like 222, and he really has to suck down, and it hurts his." Crazy, crazy, crazy. There's a difference, though. Eduardo Correa, I believe, turned pro as a light heavyweight, right? Yes. Yeah, light heavy. Jose Raymond turned pro as a middleweight. Yeah. Um, here's guys that are moving up into the 212. Guys, Aaron Clark turned pro as a, as a heavyweight, and he's having to come down and hold his weight down. And I think as a young competitor, it's just not working for him in my mind. Well, I, I guess I could agree with you right there and, and say then, then it's not the Jose, I mean, the Eduardo Correa syndrome. He's got the... Hyde syndrome because Hide, yeah. Hide, Hide is is um, I, I think Hide is far better in the open class, except that he's against mass monsters. Meaning, when when Hide was placing tenth at the Olympia, there was a couple of years where he cracked the top ten legitimately. He looked unbelievable, um, and I think you know the five pounds or seven pounds that he's given up to make the two twelve, it it hurts in a lot of ways. You know, I mean, just the the roundness. Um, but he's also he, older. Hide yeah. is also older, so Hide arguably, you know, is making a strategic move going down, kind of like way Tro Troy Alves did. Whereas Aaron Clark is still 26 years old. Is it a mistake, Lonnie, from the holding his weight back like that? I don't think so because the problem is, like with Yamagishi, and he he wasn't a top ten at the Olympia, but he was never going to be a top six guy because of the lack of size. Yeah. Clark. Yeah, can Clark go up to 235 pounds and battle he can. these guys? I think he can. Well, yeah. if he can, because I liked him last year. Yeah. I really liked his look. How tall is he? 5'7"? Probably, yeah. He's the same as Wally in the 212s in the future. <laughs> you know, I like Clark. You know, he, he may be... I think Yamagishi at this point probably doesn't have a choice. Yeah, I think he's... He doesn't have a he's choice. Not, he's, he's older. Not adding he's 40 pounds of muscle on his yeah. body. Yeah, now point. he told me he's going to go up to... To uh, 290 in the off season. <laughs> He's never been close to 290 in his yeah, life. Yeah, I know. And I said, you and who else on the He'd scale? He'd have to swallow an elephant. But anyway, you know, I, I could see the point with Clark. I think the jury's still out. Uh, maybe it would be better to go up to the next level. If, if you really got to yeah. kill yourself to get down to the 212 and you're losing a lot of muscle on the way down mm. and deflating, so yeah. to speak, that's not a plus. You may you yeah. may have to, you know, go against the big boys. Give me your top five. I'm going to go with Eduardo. 
Jose, Clark, Yamagishi, and Dixon. Uh, Jose or Eduardo, top two. Um, uh, Charles Dixon, third. Uh, Clark, fourth. Hide, fifth. I want to be controversial, but I really, I, I can't go, I, I love Jose's physique. I, I got to go Jose Raymond first. Uh, uh, I'm going to go, um, you know, I, I, I want to pick Charles Dixon. I want to put him up there, and I, I just, I don't, I dare I don't you. think he's going to bring it to the stage. I, pick I, it. I, pick him to win it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to pick him to win <laughs> it. I was going to pick him for second, but I don't think Dixon's going to bring the level of conditioning that we need to see. So I'm going to go Correa second, uh, Aaron Clark third. Dixon fourth and fifth place Yamagishi. So we'll see what happens. Um, come, I guess, Friday night is the is the 212. The men's open obviously on Saturday night will complete. And let's talk about two new divisions, Lonnie. Men's and women's physique have been added to the lineup. To me, I know Chris also loves this. The women's physique is the most kind of re-energizing to the women's side of the bodybuilding aspect of the sport. Juliana Malacarni is the reigning Miss Olympia right now. Dana Lynn Bailey, the former champion. This is the first year they're having the Arnold Women's Physique Division. Who wins? Juliana. Why? Too much muscle, great shape, complete package. Juliana looks shorter. She's a lot shorter than Dana Lynn Bailey. She actually probably weighs less than Dana Lynn Bailey, but the illusion is that she's bigger in the right places, Chris. She's, um, you know, she, she's, she's She's one of these bodybuilders, see? She's one of these physique athletes who comes along once every five years, and we say there's a superstar. You know, whether it be Phil Heath, whether it be uh, Iris Kyle, I think Juliana Malacarni is at that level where she can win for the next two or three years, for sure, um, unless somebody comes out of the woodwork. She's just... The way she's put together, the V taper, the delts, the triceps, the conditioning is like perfect blend of hardness but not too hard, the thighs shape, you, it goes on. Should the fact that Dana Lynn Bailey is such a media darling in the sense that she's got a social media following, okay. she's got her own product, she's got this, she's got that, she's all over the, should that come into play when, when the judges are actually evaluating physiques? Or does it? I, 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 I'm, I, I, that's annoying that to, to consider it. I, I would think it's, 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 it's disrespectful to, uh, to an athlete who has no social media presence, who has no supplement line, who nobody knows, but looks absolutely fabulous uh, to, to say, this person's better than you in a judged physique competition. That's how I look at it. In other words, uh, you know. Let me see what Lonnie says. Lonnie. Obviously, Dana Lynn Bailey's got the crazy social media following. Juliana Malacarney, more to herself, quiet. Obviously, her, lets her physique speak for itself. Should public perception affect, and does it affect judging? I don't think it should, but maybe it does. But you should judge who's the best physique on that mm -hmm. stage. I don't think there's any comparison, to be honest. No, no, no offense. Matter of fact, I'm going with Tracy Coppett. To get Tysey Coppin. Tysey Coppin to finish second. Okay, really? Wow. And where do you put Dana? Put Dana? Dana third. What do you think, and Chris? Again, I haven't seen any of them. But Top three. No, I mean, I, I would agree with Lonnie. You know, um, I, I, think, uh, I, I think Dana ba Lynn Bailey has a lot of uh, well-conditioned muscle that's more or less straight up and down in relation and in context to some of the other competitors. And I think that the appeal for me, for a woman's physique, somebody who, who came into it not having the desire to even like it, is to see the, the, the wacky, crazy V tapers and big sweep to the thighs, uh, the X shapes, um, which is very much genetic to have a crazy X shape like that. Um, but it's what makes it so 
exciting to watch. You know, is is you you see some 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 of the V tapers that we see right at the net even at the national level is, is unbelievable. I mean, this physiques up there on the women's physique stage that, that blow my mind. I mean, yeah. you got Jillian Ravel we, we and you got Sabrina time. Taylor. And, I mean, th th this this lineup is is rock solid. It is the Olympia. It's a replay of the Olympia, a rematch of sorts, and it's going to be exciting. But you know what? We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about men's physique figure, bikini, and fitness, so stay tuned, a lot more to come. This is IFBB Figure Pro, Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. Uh, IFBB Pro Akeem Williams, what species are you? IFBB Figure Pro, Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. IFBB Pro Akeem Williams, what species are you? This is 
IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. I have BB4 Kim Williams. What species are you? Why can't that? It doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? <laughs> this is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Mm. IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. I have BB4 Kim Williams. What species are you? Why cut back? It doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? <laughs> this is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Mm. IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today.
Ah! I have you before, Kim Williams. What species are you? Why can't that? It doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? <laughs> this is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Welcome back. This is Dave Palumbo here with Chris, the technician of Cedo, and Lonnie, the snoozer teeper. Uh, not, wake up, Lonnie. All right. Uh, wake up, Maggie. Oh. We're talking about the Arnold Classic 2015 here. We've been making predictions, we've been giving analysis. Uh, now I want to talk to you about another new division, Lonnie, men's physique. Uh, we have a reigning Mr. Olympia coming back to seek redemption in the way of Mark Flex Anthony. We also have Sadiq Hodzovic battling it out with Jason Poston. They were second and third at the Olympia this past year. The reigning Mr. Olympia, Jeremy Buendia, is not here. I have to say to you, being the Swami that you are, who is the favorite here tonight? I have to admit I'm a little biased. I just completed a cover story for Iron Man Magazine on Jason Poston. Right. So I'm a little biased towards him. I haven't met Sadiq, who's got a great physique. But I'm going to go with Jason Poston. For the win. Why? For the win. I just think he's got a great – it's hard to tell. With the, so many guys look so well, good. Sadiq beat Jason at the Olympia, and then Jason, prior to the Olympia, beat Sadiq in his own backyard at the New, New York, York Pro. Pro. Yes. So there's a little bad blood between the two of them. Well, they, it can go either way. Uh, like I said, I'm biased because I did the interview. If I interviewed Sadiq for the cover, I'd probably be picking him. If you interviewed Chris Aceto, you might be picking Chris. And he'd be third. Chris, who do you like? Um – I, I'd give Sadiq the edge. I think they're both unbelievable. I think the only way Jason can beat him is to be in his absolute bone-dry, leanest condition because Sadiq's – it's hard to neutralize uh, the delts and the full apacs. Um, like I said, they're both unbelievably impressive, uh, and, and I, I think they're like a, you know, a, a shoo-in for first and second based on, you know, the Olympia, based on the New York Pro, based on the way they've been looking the last couple of years. I saw Anton Antipov on my airplane. Luckily, he came in a day early like I did because otherwise he wouldn't have made it here. And he looks pretty phenomenal, too. Here's a real tall guy with a great structure. He's won a couple pro shows this past year, Lonnie. Where do you think Anton Antipov falls in this lineup? Wasn't he fourth at the Olympia? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, he's right there with those guys. He's right there. It's going to be tough. You know, Mark Anthony says this is retribution time. That was for my winning, next question for yeah, you. Yeah, and, and, you know, I was having him fourth or fifth, and somebody at the gym the other day said, have you seen pictures of Mark Anthony lately? He showed me these pictures. I go, whoa, he looked twice as good as I've really? seen him in the past. I don't know if he's good enough to ups upstage those other guys, but he looked, at least in those pictures, way better than I've seen him. Yeah, uh, I think Mark Anthony is going to struggle with – the, the, the level of development and, and density that uh, the three guys we just mentioned have. Um, you know, so. Well, the problem, I think, is that Mark Anthony won the Olympia when they were looking for smaller guys. I, I, I now the, the look is bigger and harder, and I think Mark is trying to play catch up now. I, I think you nailed it 100% because when men's physique first came out, it seemed like a, like a, 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 the beach bodies you'd see in New England. You know, and versus, you know, what we see now is the jacked up bodies you'd see in South Beach. You know, it's a this different. what we wanted to see yeah, when they yeah, first came out right. with it, and now they actually got it. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I, mean, I, I think the, the winning looks, looks that we saw when it first came out is like the woman's physique looks when it first came out was just like boring. Yeah. Um, whereas now, even though there's, it's still technically boring, meaning they don't do much, yeah. you know, um, the physiques are, have, yeah, more have wow. There's a lot of wow factor involved because of the, the level of conditioning, the V tapers from front back. Um, 
Give me a top four. Uh, I would say the top four are uh, uh, um, Sadiq, Poston, Anton, and I, I think you'll see someone else sneak in there who just nails their condition, and the judges say, wow, this is the best this person's ever been. She's way too professional, way too focused, way too everything for anyone to catch her at this point. And, you know, you're right. You, when she was, quote, losing, you were saying, this girl's the next superstar. And you used to tell her that all the time. Yeah, I did. I did. I never, and I'm going to remind her of that. Now, uh, Lonnie, Bethany's sister Nino and Tangie Johnson arguably have better physiques for the physique round. Unfortunately, that's only a third of the score in the fitness division. Is that enough? for them to displace Oksana? Because we have to assume Oksana is going to win the routine round. I don't think it's enough. And, uh, and I think her physique is better than I think the judges think it is. Yeah. I don't see that many flaws in her physique. I, I think either. she's got yeah. a beautiful physique, out of this world routine, unless she stumbles you know, and falls yeah. off the stage or something. Pardon me? Pulls a Madonna. Pulls a Madonna. Yeah, I, yeah, I, just, I just can't see anybody beating her. I actually thought she should have won the, these shows two and three years ago. I don't want to jinx it, but I don't think I've ever seen her make a, a, a wrong move in a routine. That's how good her routines are so perfectly choreographed. They're so like emotive to the audience that like even if she made a mistake, I don't think anyone would know it. Well, They're, like so yeah. enamored with the routine. Yeah, you're watching. sitting there in awe, going like, "How does this happen? Like how watching, does she do that?" Yeah, it's like watching a, a Las Vegas show. Yeah, me. yeah, she's. Uh, I, I think if she loses, that'd be the upset of the weekend. I, I agree. Let's talk about figure because figure is going to be a tough division. Candace Keene won here last year. I think she's won the last two years, to be honest. Last with you. two years. And Heather Dees has been second the last two years. Heather took off the Olympia. She was a little burnt out. She gave her body some rest. I saw her at our booth today. We were doing some, filming some commercials. This is the best Heather Dees I've seen, in, you know, since you know she's been competing. Um, Will this be an upset weekend, or do you think that Candace Keene has got too much and too many, uh, I guess, too much ammunition in her arsenal? So Obviously, speak. on paper, Keene wins two years in a row. Dee's is second two years in a row. Those are the top two. I like two other people at least. There's five or six really outstanding Absolutely physiques. Absolutely, there are. I like Ann to Tony. Mm -hmm. You know, small waist, what big delts, improving every year, and I like Latoya Watts. Mm -hmm who I saw at the Olympia last year and jumped out at me, and I go, wow, is anybody better than her? And she got fifth place. Yeah, well, Latoya Watts is, uh, you know, I, I've heard judges say to me, they don't know what to do with her because she's so different than everyone else. And I said, well, how about give her the win? You know, because she's got the tiny waist, she's got the flaring quads, the great back. I know Chris and I are both real big fans of her. She obviously finally won a pro show last year. She, one in Tampa. She took fifth at the Olympia. Is she on the way up? You think she's going to move up the ranking? I think she's on the way up. And, you know, regardless of what I think, I think she should place higher. Is uh, she too much for figure? No, no. Um, I don't think she's too much. Uh, I, I think she, I would consider her a front runner based on what I find or, or should be, the, you know, the ideal. And, and I agree with you. I saw Heather D's at the booth today at the Species booth. And I went like that, meaning her delts have like really improved her arms. She just looks leaner, harder in all the right ways. Um, she's a beautiful girl, obviously. She's uh, she's like the 
2015 version of uh, Marie Osmond. I, I <laughs> she, yeah, she's pure, yeah. And, and uh, uh, I, I think, um, you know, she might be able to pull an upset because it seems like she's added enough hardness and muscle to her body to accentuate what she al always ha already has. And it might be, you know, um, it might be enough to overtake uh, Candace Keene. Give me a top five, Lonnie. Uh, I said Watts the other night in your show. I'm going to yeah. go with Heather Dees. Where, where, where'd that come from? Well, I had her second. You said I could change. Okay. After I hearing <laughs> her description. Really? What? Lonnie's well, it's, swayed by us. Well, no, you know what? I think Watts still probably has the best physique up there. I'd probably agree with you. But I don't know if she's going to go It from, might be too much for the judges. Maybe too much. I don't know. I'm going to go with... Dees or are Keen are going to be 1-2 again. Yeah. Uh, in third, let me put Watts no worse than third. Yeah. And to Tony's awful good. I hate to stick her in fourth. Yeah. Right. She's getting better all the time. And fifth, we got... Candace Lewis, maybe? Candace Lewis has got a beautiful physique. There's And, and Car uh, Carmela Rodriguez? Yeah. She's awful Kamala good, too. Kamala, yeah. she could be... As high as third. It's a very. It's going to be a tough lineup. Could be the toughest lineup yeah. of the weekend. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with uh, Candice ahead of first and second. Yeah, I, I think that's it. It's going to be. I, you know, I would conventional wisdom would say Candice Keene because she's been there before, uh, with Heather second, Latoria Watts third. I think those are the three best in the lineup. I think then you're fighting for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And I, I think that Camel Rodriguez is probably going to take that fourth spot. Even though Antonio will probably be the most conditioned person, I'll put her in fifth, and Candace Lewis in sixth, who needs just to bring up the legs just a little bit, but probably has one of the nicest shapes in the lineup. The figure division might be the deepest of any. You know, aside from Nicole Wilkins, we got the Olympia lineup here. Yeah, no, it's it's. Um, at the end of the day, this I think this class is the class where if people are not, you know, if they're a little soft, a little watery or mushy, they it could really affect the placings. You know, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it's hard to predict. I, I, I would say Dees, Keen, Watts, uh, and um, uh, who'd, you go, who'd you have in fourth or fifth? To Tony? To Tony. To Tony. I think to Tony, you know, because of condition, we'll sneak in there. Okay. Now, you know, it's, it's interesting because we have, we have to talk about bikini now, but we have actually um, a little visual aid. Johnny Styles to give me a visual aid. Johnny Styles, the visual aid? Yeah, he's bringing in. Is he in a bikini? You know that he likes to oh. bring the Puerto Rican girls in, Alani. Mexican girls and Latin women, as we like to say. We have Nancy Rodriguez here. She's a Mexican bikini superstar, according to Johnny. And that's not said very lightly. She's also a fan of RX Muscle. She, uh, she likes our play-by-play, -play, Chris, and I'm sure she listens to the radio show, too. Um, she was top three at the Amateur Olympia. And I want, we're going to look at her physique, Chris, and I want you guys to give her a live play-by-play -play critique of what you see. So this is very, there's a lot of pressure, Chris. Yeah, a lot of pressure, Lonnie Teeper. All right? So here we go. Are, are we on? We're on, right? All right, muy, Lonnie, muy, tell me what muy you like. bueno. <laughs> muy bueno. Are you going to do it in Spanish, Lonnie? Híjole. See, I like I like the glutes. The glutes are great. I think. Ah, great glutes, right? Good abs. Abs are important for bikini, right? I'm this on, is what this I'm is a bikini. Keen Johnny, I, I, if, Johnny, I can't find any flaws, right? Yeah, she uh, looks huh? like she was third. Right? I mean, I'm trying to pick. Who was first and second? Huh? I'm talking talk to the microphone, Chris. I, I'm, I'm, on, I, I'm, I'm following. This is to me. I'm going to give you my my bikini yeah. thing. Is you got to have abs, number one. You got to have a tight butt. She's got that. You got to be beautiful. She's got that. Okay. She's got the long straight hair. I like. That's a great look. I don't. I don't really like curly hair on the bikini girls. So I like any hair. Yeah, that works. She's <laughs> she's tastefully displaying what she's got, Lonnie, and I think that's important. Okay. I love the suit, and I like the little rhinestones on the side. She's got the good jewelry, and the and the great earrings. If you have great earrings, then you can't go wrong, Chris. I can't find anything wrong, right, right. Johnny? <laughs> now, let's do your, do your turns one more time, because now presentation is the only thing we have to judge. I want you guys to give, give your honest opinion. Presentation. All right. Let's see presentation. <laughs> you notice Johnny's got the great light on her. He couldn't get any light on us, but he got great light on her. <laughs> Johnny. I, th I think we have a winner. Chris's wife is texting me to tell Chris to stop looking. <laughs> You're not Presentation? Huh? Perfect. Lonnie? Awesome. You got a winning? I don't know how. Can anybody be better than this? We, can we hold up? <laughs> first place. First place. Ten. 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 
What can she improve, Lonnie? You've seen social a lot of media. bikini. Her social media. <laughs> social media. Yeah. You've seen a lot of bikini contests in your day. Uh, I what don't does know. she need to do to get on that Arnold Pro stage? Just keep doing what she's doing. She looks terrific here. You know, you talk about a bikini body. This is a bikini body. I'm going to say, uh, here's my critique, because everyone's, no, you guys are just going to gush and gush and gush. I think you could actually be more animated on stage and more, you know, sell, sell it to me more. That's my critique. Can I use calves in this case, or does that not apply? I don't know if calves apply to, <laughs> for, to, to, to bikini. Lonnie has, if you don't have calves, Lonnie don't want to know from you. <laughs> well, you know, maybe a tad bigger. I'm good. I'm good. I, I got, I'm, got my vote. <laughs> Let's talk about pro bikini. How about that? Who wins here? Miss Olympia, Ashley Kaltwasser is in the lineup, Lonnie. She's awful good, and she, you know, she won here. She was 10th two years ago, won the thing. Is that a true fact? I think she was 10th in wow. her debut I, I couldn't pull from Ohio, back. and then she won the Olympia. And a lot of people criticized her after winning the Olympia that she was not hard enough and that she was winning these shows soft. She changed all that this year at the Olympia. She came in best shape of her life. She's a, 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 I think she is a legitimate champion now. I don't know if anyone can knock her off that pedestal. Yeah, I really like Janet Leag. I don't know she was second at the Olympia? And she was eighth here, I think, last year in her debut and went all the way to second at the Olympia. Beautiful girl. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I still think Ashley has to be the favorite hometown girl if she is continuing to improve like she did from the Arnold to the Olympia, it's going to be awful tough to unsee. How about Sarah LeBlanc, who was at the Species booth today? She looks pretty. She's won four pro shows last year, Chris. She's obviously on the rise. She's going to be in there for the running for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, can she win? It's hard to, to beat someone with the momentum that uh, was Ashley has. So well, The Miss Olympia is the most momentum you can have. I mean, and, I mean, look, when you look at a girl like Nancy Rodriguez, who just proposed for us as an amateur, and she looks that good, I mean, you see how hard it is for these judges to decide, even at the pro level, who's what. I would not want to be a judge judging bikini because it's really, because I think they're all beautiful. I, I, I think that it's probably, you know, it's a class that probably should have the most controversy because there's so many good competitors. And it has a lot of turnover because of yes. that. Yeah, it has a lot of turnover. Where so, are all the girls who won yeah, years ago? Yeah. If you think about it, Nicole Negrani was, was 18 when she was winning or something for, like that. She was 19. Yeah. She won this, the first one. Yeah, I mean, that, Four where years is she? Ago. She's washed up at 22 years old. I, mean, I think she's in medical school. I know. I'm just, I'm just, the point I'm making is that there's huge turnover. Where's Nathalia Mello? Where's right. Sonia Gonzalez? Where are all these wow. initial Miss Olympias and all the, the women? How uh, they moved on ass? and got married and had kids. Is and, that what it is? Well, Sonia's married and retired yeah. two, three years ago. Right. So, uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with Colt Wasser, Janet in second, LeBlanc in third, and Ashley Rodriguez in fourth. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Lonnie's. I like Lonnie's <laughs> pick. I'm in, I think India Paulina will be in that third or fourth spot. Um, but I think you got the first two right. And it'll be interesting. Is, is Yashira Robles in this lineup? I don't think, I don't she's, think so. she's in. She's no. not in this. Yeah, because she was. Uh, I'd have her battling. Yeah, you know, she's awful too. good. I would too. Like you say, a lot of them. A lot of them are awful good. It's going to be a great Arnold Classic. They also have the pole fitness finals on Friday night on the main stage. I, we, don't, I don't know if it's on the main stage now. I think it's at night. That's is it they, in the Clint main stage? Clint told me that. Clint, your your nemesis. Uh, oh, he's a good guy. No, your uh, your your co MC, yes, I guess. Yes. Is told me that there will be Friday night the the okay. pole fitness finals. Uh, Anna Elise Bowman, who is a species nutrition athlete, will be uh, in that event. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I think it's by, I think it's great to put it up there because you know what? To me, the most entertaining stuff on the stage. I know we love bodybuilding, Chris. Is when we see the fitness routines. And the only thing better than a fitness routine could be a pole fitness routine. Right, Chris? A pole fitness routine, pose down. <laughs> no, you know, a pole fitness routine is... Um, I mean, that's just entertainment. It's, well, it's, it's another dimension to this weekend that you don't see at other weekends. Right. And what about Saturday night, Lonnie? Are you looking at all the naked women yes, walking around no, here? No, I, I was thinking what you said, and I was reading the program during the week and on the plane, and I think the pole fitness, and I could be wrong, I'll stand corrected, but I think it originally was going to be in the main stage on Friday night, but I think they're having it in another room. I no could way. be wrong. Impossible. Well, I could be wrong. I hope you're wrong. I was looking at the program, and I didn't see it listed in the Saturday Friday night. Saturday night, we will see the Arnold Strongman Pro Finals 
the last event up on the main stage like they do every year. Brian Shaw battling it out with Benedict Magnuson and uh, a bunch of other top competitors. Uh, Shaw, obviously, the defending champion, f something like 450 pounds at six foot eleven. I mean, yeah, the guy's just guys a monster. Are, yeah, if you ever want to feel small, come backstage when the strong man are on. That's right. I love and to interview weak. those guys because I look like a little wimp. And, and feel weak. Yeah, yeah. Lonnie, it's always a pleasure. Best of luck this weekend. I know you're going to be you. doing a great job emceeing, and uh, we all look forward to watching you up on the main okay. stage. Okay, thank you very all right. much. Thanks for what having me. What do we got me. over there now? We got some guests, Chris, so we might want to pull into here. Um, it's Jeff Bins. And a man and Amanda Sweet Capri. You want to say hello? Wave to the crowd. Come here, Jeff. Jeff Bins. Are you, uh, were you delayed in your flight? I was not. I had it easy. I got here with no problems. You're lucky. I am. How did you get out? No one else got out. Wednesday morning at 2 o'clock. Oh, Wednesday. Drove, yep, drove down to Philadelphia Airport and got a 6 o'clock flight, and I got here. Very smart. Come here, Amanda. Say hello to the uh, RX Plus audience. Hi, everyone. Hello. We haven't seen you. You're looking very good. What have you been up to? Oh, I'm working a lot. A okay. I'll sit down. <laughs> So what have you been up to now? I know you are up in Connecticut there, and you help the Montanari brothers with all their shows and stuff like that. Is uh, what's going on this year? Um, the Powerhouse, uh, Powerhouse Classic. It's uh, March 28, and then we have um, a posting workshop uh, being held by uh, Kenny Wallach. Kenny Wallach will be up there filming, I think. Yeah. Oh, you you guys are. I have to see if Johnny Styles is heading. Yeah. I think you are. Yeah. So that's going to be the 14th. We are have uh, we're expecting a big crowd as usual so yeah it's amazing that you know a lot of people don't know how to pose or don't know how to present themselves and it's a good workshop because Kenny really doesn't charge for it and so people can just come and they can watch it live on RX Muscle and it's just giving back to the community absolutely and I actually take all the content and I put it on his website I put it on our website I send it you know, to you guys yeah. we give it to NPC News so it's really a lot of great content that it's available for anybody who's interested in competing Speaking of posing you know I we also Gary you just did a, a posing uh, I guess you could say seminar, and we have that uh, footage we're going to be putting up on RX Muscle a little later in, in the week. I don't want it to get lost in the oral coverage. What are you going to be doing here all the weekend long? Who are you working for? Bodybuilding.com this week, and I'm going to be covering all the women, IFBB pros. Oh. Um, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah. So enjoy the weekend, and uh, it's always good to see you. All right. You too. All see right. you later. What do we got over there? Um, I'm being uh, briefed right now, Chris. Well, bring her over here. I'll ask her. I don't know what you, I don't remember, but yes, you do. oh, Vanessa, right? I remember Vanessa. Okay, I helped her mother with the diet. Come on over. Look at this physique, Chris. First of all, and you can obviously see she's got some problems walking, but look at the development on this 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 girl. Come in. You want to sit down? Sure. Okay. Tell us why you're walking like that because I think this is will be the most amazing thing that people hear. Sure, uh, yeah, my name is Vanessa Rogers. Um, when I was 16 years old, I was in a motor vehicle car accident. I broke my neck in four places, was paralyzed from the neck down and deemed a complete quadriplegic. Um, say, yeah. that, say that again, what you were deemed. All right, I broke my neck in four places, uh, was paralyzed from the neck down. And paralyzed from the neck down and, and told that she would never walk again. Yeah, deemed a complete quadriplegic and also uh, told I had a 100% chance of never walking again and with the most intense therapy, I'd be able to feed myself. And how long did it take you before you were walking? Uh, it took me about five months. Somehow the nurse found pathways around the shredded spinal cord and I was able to start moving my toes. And that, it started with just toe movement? It's, yep, and then I started uh, being able to, to move. Let me ask you a question. I mean, stand up for a second. Look at, I mean, you have, amazingly developed legs yet you're, you you have trouble walking how is that possible I do I have to modify my workouts I can't do a lot of things that the able-bodied girls can do so I have to figure out a way to get them done because the judges don't care that I walk with a cane they're gonna judge me equally with all the other girls so a couple of things that I do are a little bit different but one thing especially is my lunges I can't do normal lunges like normal girls so what I do is I hike up the treadmill to a 10 inch incline and then I do 10 minutes of walking lunges on, uh, oh my on god. I get my ass done, I get my quads in, and then my squats. Um, 
I go on my tippy toes and do weightless squats down by holding my upper body up and trying not to use my upper body as much as possible. But what is your restrictions essentially? Where do you what do you have that you can't feel? I guess. Well, I can feel everything, but the just the nerves are damaged. The motor nerves, yeah. Yeah, the motor nerves. So what they have deemed through a functional expert is that I my hip flexors are non-existent, my adductors are very weak, and my lower abdominals are very weak. So the whole balance part of it. Um, Strength-wise, I can do a lot of strength stuff as much as an able-bodied girl can, but just the movement and getting it done is a little difficult. I'm still technically classified as a quadriplegic because all four limbs are affected. This hand's 95% back and this hand's only like 35% back. So when I do my poses, I can't make my one hand all nice and graceful and stuff because, yeah, it just doesn't go that way. You're still a lot more graceful than Chris and I. Now, Chris, if, pick up the microphone here. Don't be lazy. If you were I'm not lazy, I'm, I'm mesmerized. If you were looking at her just standing here, okay, and you didn't see her walk up here with the cane, would you think there was anything wrong Zero. with her whatsoever? I don't think there's anything fact, wrong with her with the cane. You would, you would think that huh? she was going to win the show, right? You, you, you're, you're unbelievable, unbelievably inspirational. I mean, I can't even. You're, you're very inspiring. I'm, I'm in the awe of the fact that you're able to develop yourself to this degree. Yeah. I mean, did when people, when the doctors see you, your doctors who initially worked, diagnosed you, are they just flabbergasted and they just shut their mouths? Yeah, I yeah. still have to go um, like once a year to the rehab hospital to, you know, for updates and stuff, and they still like sit there and shake their heads because they cannot believe I'm doing what I'm doing. And that was before I even started weight training when I was deemed the complete quadriplegic. But uh, if you're in shock and amaze after that, I'll do you one better because I have, as of this month, only been weight training for two years. What? No. Yeah, my very first competition was in Muscle Beach 2013. In less than a year, I was on the national stage and I made top 10 out of 23 able-bodied girls. And less than eight hours later, I competed in, ran and finished the Spartan race. What do you mean Spartan race? What is that? The Spartan race, it's up and down hills and through valleys. You and could run? Obstacles. No, it took me five hours to do that Spartan race, but I sure did it. And I had a lot of help from my teammates to help me up over the obstacles and stuff. And then, yeah, because I qualified top 10 at nationals, I got to compete here at the Arnold. That is amazing. All right, let me, let's move this chair back and let's see if we can do some quarter turns here. I want to see how you look. All right, let me get this chair out of the way. Okay. I think you're more able-bodied than I am right now. I have bad shoulders. All right, here we go. <laughs> look at this. Chris, I want to critique. Look at how small her waist is. Uh, just took the, of course you took the words out of my mouth. Great I can't container. believe that. She said she can't control the lower abdominals. I can't believe that. Unbelievable. See, all these people out there who complain oh, about know, that, that they know, have a pain know, in their ass know, or they, know, uh, know, they got know, a sneeze or an itch in their nose. <laughs> Look at her. and I, If you complain, you're crazy. Because you know what? It's all the complaining that makes them not be able to do the things they can. Show this to Cedric McMillan. If he can't win the Arnold after looking at this girl, <laughs> he's got genetic tools up the gazoo. Unbelievable. Congratulations. <laughs> have you gotten on stage yet? I did, yeah. How'd you do? Uh, I didn't make top 10, so I guess I have to find out what I made. Yeah. Um, I knew coming into it, I mean, these girls have been competing for a very long time. An international field. Right, exactly. And um, when with a figure girl, when you're supposed to pull your knees apart, sort of, slightly, to pop your quads out, I can't flex my legs like the other girls, and I can't develop my leg. It's going to take me a lot longer to develop my leg muscles. So I knew I wasn't going to get like you know a pro card year, but I, you know eventually I will because eventually these legs will cooperate with the rest of me. Are you still improving consistently? Like, do you notice every year you you got more coordination, more muscle control, and stuff like that? No, um, I think it's just permanent unless they come find a miracle. I guess. Uh, it doesn't affect my like my weight training and developing all the muscles doesn't affect my walking at all whatsoever. So my mobility isn't improving and stuff, but my physique is. So. Hey, keep going. Your uh, your potential is unlimited. Thank you. And she proved that all potential is unlimited, Chris, because she's got plenty of excuses if she wants them, and she doesn't take any of them. Uh, you're a, a true inspiration. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Well, Chris, you know. A lot of inspiration here at the Arnold this year to start off the weekend. You know, I know we got obviously the Expo to cover. We got the Hall of Fame coming up, which is with Triple H and Vander Holyfield, Michael J. White, Landon Murray, which is another great inspiration. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's like a feel-good weekend because just a lot of good stuff comes about here. And a lot of people are honored. Uh, I don't know what year this is for the Arnold Classic, but it's been going on since 1989. 80, yeah, 80. Arnold is still here every single year. Shows up, 
He presents the awards. He interviews all the winners. I mean, that that just shows how much Arnold really loves bodybuilding. Yeah, no, I mean, he loves bodybuilding. And, you know, I was here for the first Arnold, so it was like 26 years ago. Mm. So I was like uh, 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was held in what's now the demolished Veterans Memorial mm. Auditorium. Yeah. And I think that this town, you know, while it's, it's a big town and there's a lot of Fortune 500 companies, but the downtown revitalization that has gone on in this area. This used to be because a, a, of Arnold. a quote, bad area. Yeah. It's be partly because you, of the Arnold Classic. You remember in, 19, in 1994, when I came here, I think for the first time, the only place to eat the was e the Spaghetti yeah. Factory. There was no place to the, eat. It was like, yeah. a, you would walk around, it was like it was like a, a dead zone here. It was, it was, it was, it was like was, the Walking Dead. It was, and yeah. this, this, uh, this, was, this area down here was a, quote, bad area. Mm -hmm. There was no, uh, you know, there was no housing, so to speak, no, no urban housing. Yeah. Uh, the downtown was dead at night. I mean, it, it, this, the way it's changed in the last 25 years is unbelievable. I just, I, I, I'm so... Lonnie, Lonnie has, looks the same, though. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's gotten younger looking, I think. <laughs> you know, Triple H, who will be doing the WWE experience here. Right now, they actually have a match over at the arena. I was going to go over there, but we obviously had to do this pregame show. I might meet him for dinner after. He told me that Arnold had called him up prior to the Arnold Classic and when they were discussing involving the WWE wrestling in this weekend. And he said to me, Arnold was on the phone with him for like an hour talking wrestling and bodybuilding with him. And he goes, you know, here I am as like a kid growing up. Arnold was my idol. Yeah. He goes, and I, I had to go to a meeting and I didn't want to tell Arnold, I got to go. Because yeah, you yeah. don't hang up on Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. No, I would, but I would keep talking. That just yeah. goes to show you that Arnold loves bodybuilding still. Of course he loves How bodybuilding. Could, think about it. He's in his almost 70 and, he, and he's still thinking about who's going to you know, win the double, front double bicep pose. Because, you, you know, I you know, you can accomplish a lot of things in your life, uh, and a, pe a lot of people uh, across a big spectrum do accomplish a lot of things, but what you really, really, really love yeah. is what you love. Of and, course. you know, he loves bodybuilding. He can't, you know, well, you can't get it out of his bloodstream. I forget who told me the story, though, but I heard that, that when Arnold, like, hangs out with Ralph Moeller in his house. Oh, yeah, he told me. I was yeah, just who, who told me the story? Bob Goldman. Bob Goldman yeah, told me the story. they hit the poses. They, they, they go through poses. Like, like yeah. Arnold would be like, Ralph, hit the most muscular. And then Ralph yeah. Moeller hit the most muscular. And, they, you know, they're, they're all beaten up like we are yeah. now. You know, and, and, you know, I'm sure Arnold edges those guys on. Come on, you know, uh, uh, I don't know. Who else does he hang out with? Who's in that group? I forget who that little <laughs> click group is. Franco. It's Stallone, probably. Franco. Huh? Franco hit the crab shot, you know. <laughs> but you know, it goes back to, sit, to saying to, you always are good, or I should say you're great at what you're passionate yeah. about. And Arnold was passionate about bodybuilding. He was passionate about acting. He was passionate about politics. And look at how successful he was. And I think that's a great yeah. take-home message here tonight. Look at the inspiration from Vanessa yeah. we just saw. If you want to do something bad enough and you put your mind to it, guess what? You can do it. And that's my little tip of the night. And I hopefully you guys enjoyed our pregame show. Um, I got something. Oh, we got, we, got another, we got another special guest coming. On our way here, we have a special bikini guest, Chris. So I guess we got to kill a little bit more time. Um, why don't we go to a commercial break? When we come back, we're going to have one more very special guest, maybe two, and uh, I think you guys are going to like it. Stick around. This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. IFBB Pro Akeem Williams, what species are you? Why cut that? 
doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Mm. This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. Uh, I have BB4 Kim Williams. What species are you? Why cut back? It doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? <laughs> this is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Mm. This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. I have BB4 Kim Williams. What species are you? Why cut back? It doesn't pay. Why cut back? Why cut back? <laughs> this is 
This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and you are watching RX Television. Mm. This is IFBB Figure Pro Heather Dees, and I love my Species ISO bag. If you want to be like me, go to speciesnutrition.com and order yours today. All right, I'm back here in Arnold Classic 2015 in Columbus, Ohio. I'm here with Shelby Maynard. We were just talking about inspirational stories, and she heard us tell, talk to Vanessa before and to see what she ever overcame to be able to get up onto a figure stage. Well, you were just in the Arnold Fitness Amateur event and you might have Vanessa beat because not only did you uh, overcome Lyme disease, you overcame a traumatic head injury from cheerleading, you, you overcame a traumatic car accident. Talk to me about what happened to you. <laughs> what was first? Okay, um, so when I was about 17 years old, um, junior in high school, I was doing competitive cheerleading. Um, I got dropped on my head twice. Let, let me stop you for a second because people out there think of cheerleading as the girls who shake the pom poms. <laughs> you guys do like pyramids and, and flips in the air. How do you get dropped on your head? Um, I think it was just like a mishap, like something went wrong and I came straight down on the back of my head. Um, Did someone miss you? Yes, yeah. <laughs> catching you, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> Does that happen a lot in cheerleading? Um, not tons, um, but it's just the fact that mine happened back to back. That's how the head injury came about. So you got dropped in your head. Did you pass out? Um, the first time I didn't, I didn't really think anything was wrong. Um, so they told me I could go back to cheering, and then about a month later, I got a second one, and after that, I spent... So you about. fell in your head twice? Yes, yeah. Wow. Now, did the second one have anything to do with the first one? Like, were you just not as, as you know... A sharp? Yeah, after that's when I started noticing like all the problems, like the brain fuzziness. Um, I was having trouble in school. I started going half days to high school um, for about six months. So. <laughs> did you think, you know, I really messed myself up? Yeah, oh yeah, I thought I was like done. <laughs> what, but what was it? What, who had they diagnosed you as having Lyme disease? Um, so I was still struggling with all that. Um, I was at college at Indiana University. Um, I just wasn't feeling better. Um, and my body started, I felt like my body was shutting down. I had lots of body pain. Um, so they took me in, uh, ran some tests. Um, first thing they noticed was that I lost my eyelashes. Um, they were like, Is that that's a symptom of Lyme disease? Yes, yeah, that's one of the big signs of it. So they automatically tested me for it, um, called us back. They said, you have stage three Lyme disease. Um, stage three, wow. Yeah, so it was really bad. They said they thought I'd had it maybe four years, so. <laughs> Do you ever remember getting bit by a tick or anything like that? Um, I don't, no, and it must have been like at college when it happened, so. <laughs> so you never found, like you never pulled something out of your skin or anything? No, uh-uh. <laughs> Very weird, Did you never have that little target-eyed, you know, yeah, no, I never had that, so I had no, I had no idea. So how did they, now, I know that Lyme disease is usually treated with multiple antibiotics for a long period of time. Yes, um, they started me on those. I was also on herb drops. Um, there was about, I don't know, I'd say like five to six months period where I just laid in bed. Like, I thought I was going to die. Like, I felt that bad. Like, nothing was working. Pretty much gave up on life. Pretty much gave up on myself. Lost all hope. Um, how do, you, how, do you, how do you mentally, emotionally recover from that? What, there's always got to be some one event that happened that somehow changed your perspective and said, you know what, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do this. What, what was that? Um, it was the gym. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, for Christmas, I was like, I really just want a gym membership. I want a way to get out of the house. Um, you know, I was a competitive gymnast growing up, I'm a competitive cheerleader. I was always real active. Um, so I was like, I'm going to start working out. And lo and behold, um, it helped my body pain. It started taking the symptoms away. Um, five months later, I competed in my first um, bikini competition. Wow. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I took that, um, I did that at Junior Nationals and that's where I saw the fitness and I was like, oh my gosh, this is me. <laughs> well, yeah, with the gymnastics and cheerleading background, but I, I'm assuming you're not doing anything where you're gonna be flipping you know, on your head or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I have to be careful about what stuff I do, now, for sure. Going, what, what level gymnast were you? Um, I was level eight in sixth grade, um, and I hurt my back, so that's why I had to quit. All right, so, so. I mean, you were at a pretty high level, so I'm sure some of the skills in fitness are probably not that difficult for you. Yeah, it, it came really easy. Um, the strength holds I had to work on a little bit. Um, I had never really like done anything like that, so but they, it all came pretty easy. So 
Now, uh, do you see yourself wanting to go all the way with this, you know, to the professional level in fitness? I do. Um, I got third last year at Junior Nationals. I was real excited about that. That was like my first big show. Um, I really, I really want to go pro. Like that's my goal. Olympia, <laughs> ultimate goal. I know I'm still young. Um, I've only been doing it two years, but. When you see Oksana Grishina do her routine, what, 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 like, what do you feel when you see that? Can you relate to that? <laughs> Yeah, um, she's my idol. So, Oksana, if you're watching, um, <laughs> you're my biggest idol. Um, she's awesome. I love her. Um, love everything about her. So, how are the symptoms now of, of, of the Lyme disease and the and the head traumas? I, I, are you past that, or do you ever have any recurring symptoms? Um, I do still have Lyme disease. Um, it's manageable now, but it is hard. Um, it's hard with the diet um, and the training. Like even on stage today, I noticed towards the end of my routine, my heart was just shutting down you know it's squeezing for air because it attacks your heart your brain and all your muscles so what do you do now are they just, are you always being treated or is it just nothing they could do at this point um it's always being treated um it can go into remission um sometimes that's like a 10 year period before that happens um but right now i it's still active in me I so still you're still on it. medication yeah every day which is tough i'm sure because it, it wipes you out right oh yeah i'm tired um i still i can't work a full-time job um i only work 30 hours a week um it's still a lot. <laughs> it's still a lot, yeah, but lots of like life changes that I've had to make because of this. So well, I just deal with it, and I just do me every day and stay positive, stay happy. So <laughs> Good luck in your pursuit of that pro card. I'm sure you're going to make it. Uh, congratulations. To, you know what? Another very inspirational story. You're right. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for interviewing me. <laughs> I think we have uh, another uh, person here. Let's see if we can get her to sit down next to me. Sarah, sit right here. IFBB Bikini Pro, Sarah LeBlanc with a very cute little outfit on there. Well, thank you. You're always perfectly manicured, hair Aww. done. Your outfits always are coordinated and match. Your, your jewelry. How do you do it? Well, um, I think my sister that's two years older than me just gave me all of her knowledge and, you know, fashion. And she used to always clothe me whenever I was growing up. You, you know, the southern thing because you got the southern accent. Uh, to me, you're like a like the perfect southern woman. Oh. Well, thank you, but um, it's just something that I love to do. I say I'm a little fashionista as well as the gym girl, so it's fun. Four pro wins last year. Um, yeah. I mean, you really made a big impact on the bikini division. Uh, you were all over the place. You're probably one of the most consistent competitors, too, because you're able to compete time and time again and, and do well and get better, which a lot of the girls seem to flip-flop. Their conditioning is off a little bit at one show. It's better at another show. How do you stay so mentally focused and not burn out? Well, you know, just always pushing to bring like a better package than what I did before, you know, looking where I can improve in my physique. And that's just super motivating. Um, you know, my dietitian and I work very closely as far as like working through off season prep, just as well as on season to make sure I'm dialing in, you know, the best I can. So, and you're right, consistency is everything. So, in this sport it is, yeah. Yes. So it's amazing, you know, every, all the four shows that I did take first in this past year, I brought a different look. If you really compare them, they're slightly different, but um, I like all of them, you know, but, um, you know, it, it would be nice if I can hit it on the nail each time. So that's my goal this year, to just try to even get it more consistent. Now you're so. always smiling and happy, and people tell me I'm always smiling and happy too, but um, are you always smiling and happy, or are you just a, a, a generally jovial person because I have to imagine that dieting all the time can get tiresome and, and can yeah. get you know make you a little irritable once in a while you know I have my moments I would say just like everyone else but um, I really try to stay positive and I love this sport for that you know it's just surrounded by positive people and um, just always trying to bring my best you know what does it mean to be able to get up onto the Arnold Classic stage this year against <laughs> Miss Olympia, Ashley Kaltwasser, and the whole crew of, uh, you know, India Paulino and all the other, you know, Janet Lake, who was second at the Olympia. I mean, this has got to be, you know, uh, I guess a, a significant moment in your life. It really is, because, you know, going to the Olympia this year was a significant moment as well, but I took seventh, which was the top of the second call-out. 
So for this show, I'm super excited just to be compared to the, the top girls in the sport. You know, I feel like now I finally get that comparison and see where I stand with the best. So. It's interesting because it's, it's tough because you, here you, you'll win four pro shows and then you'll come in seventh at the Olympia, which tells you how deep the bikini lineup is. And as Chris and I talked about a little earlier, there's t a lot of turnover. The girls don't seem to be the same girls that are there every year. So consist to be consistently in that top group is, is an accolade in and of itself. Yes, it is. And, um, you know, I, it's an honor to be up there, you know, with the girls. So um, it's going to be exciting to see, you know, where I fall. And Well, it's exciting also for me to announce. I know we, we had you a little earlier. We were doing a photo shoot. We did some commercials at you. You're a new species nutrition athlete. And uh, I know you and I have been going back and forth for a couple of months and trying to make this happen. And I'm excited to make it happen here at the Arnold. And uh, if any of you guys want to come by the booth on Sunday, um, Sarah's going to be there all day signing pictures and taking pictures and I think that a lot of the fans are going to get to interact one-on-one yes. -on -one with you. I can't wait to meet everybody. Please come out. We'll get pictures and I'd love to sign autographs. So super excited about that. Well, we're excited to have you on board and good Thank luck. You. Lonnie Teeper has you third place. Let's see. Ooh, I'm, I'm afraid to make predictions because I, I don't like to jinx anyone, but yeah, well. a lot of people are saying top three for you, and that would obviously be a humongous feather in your cap. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that would make me so happy. Right, just so. stand up. Give it, man, get the camera. there. Let, let's just get a quick look at her. I love this outfit she's got on. Come here. Come closer a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, do a little pose down for us there. Sarah LeBlanc. One day before, she's on stage in that Bikini International. What a way to take out this program tonight, huh? <laughs> Sarah, <safe>. say goodbye <laughs> to everyone out there. Bye, y'all. Thank you. And y'all come out to 709 booth, and I will see y'all on Sunday. <laughs> you heard it from Sarah LeBlanc. Now you hear it from Dave Palumbo. This weekend, all weekend long, check out all the live coverage on rxmuscle.com. Don't miss the Bob Goldman International Sports Hall of Fame on Sunday. That's 12 noon. We'll be live streaming that event. Also live play-by-play -play for the women's prejudging, the uh, men's and women's physique uh, prejudging and finals. Uh, Friday night, obviously the finals. And then, of course, Saturday will be the men's open event. Don't miss it all weekend long exclusively at rxmuscle.com.